Turkish aerospace industry has passed another important milestone in the ANK-83 unmanned aerial vehicle project, which was initially developed with domestic resources. ANK-3, Turkey's first vertical tail turbofan engine UAV, successfully completed its first flight. ANK-3's first flight lasted 1 hour 10 minutes and saw the drone reach an altitude of 8,000 feet and a speed of 150 knots. The turbofan-powered ANK-3 took off at 8.38 am local time and was accompanied by a TAG Horkus turboprop trainer as chase aircraft. The event is a big deal for Turkey as a whole, reflected by a tweet to mark the occasion from President Tayyip Erdogan. Our unmanned warplane ANK-3, developed by TA, successfully completed its first flight today. Hopefully, our aircraft will make a strong contribution to the defense of our country with its advanced technologies, design, and features. ANK-3, a new generation UAV system, provides reconnaissance, surveillance, and intelligence, attack with different air ground munitions, hunt prey by attacking enemy helicopters, propeller aircraft, and UAVs with air-to-air -air munitions, neutralize enemy RF transmitting radars and air defense systems, protection of friendly forces in the air and on the ground, signals and communications intelligence, electronic warfare. It will be able to perform multiple tasks, such as operations and communication relays, along with other friendly elements. Reportedly, each of the two fuselage storage stations will be able to carry 1,400 pounds of weapons. The two inner wing stations will each also be able to lift 1,400 pounds, while the outer wing stations will each have a capacity of 220 pounds. The drone also has internal weapons bays, which will be necessary to preserve its low observable features. Among the weapons that have now been announced for the drone's armoring include the US-made MiG-82, 500, pound freefall bomb, and small diameter bomb, SDB, as well as the locally produced SOMJ, a standoff missile with a range of at least 170 miles. At the Border Security Summit, held March 21-22 in Ankara, TE Chief Executive Temelkadal said the ANK-3 has begun ground tests ahead of plans for its maiden flight. Cottle also discussed technical specifications of the drone during his presentation at the event. According to the CEO, the ANK-3 will have a maximum takeoff weight of 6,500 kilograms, 14,330 pounds, and a payload capacity of 1,200 kilograms, 2,646 pounds. Its maximum altitude is 40,000 feet and can last 10 hours at 30,000 feet, he added, which its cruise speed is 250 knots, 288 miles per hour, with a top speed of 425 knots, 489 miles per hour. The ANK-3 is nothing if not ambitious, befitting a country that is also developing a crude stealth fighter, which is also due to make its first flight anytime soon. Indeed, it's very likely that the TFX fighter and the ANK-3 are intended to ultimately work together, as part of a crewed slash uncrewed teaming arrangement. Comparable in size to a light fighter, the ANK-3's low observable characteristics are intended to make it survivable for combat missions including strike, surveillance, suppression and destruction of enemy air defenses, and electronic warfare. The ANK-3 is likely to introduce more stealthy features as its development continues. In particular, the current exhaust nozzle, a conventional round type, may well give way to a low observable exhaust after initial testing is completed. The same has happened in the past with Russia's Oconic BUCAV, as well as China's GG-11 Sharp Sword. Another interesting aspect of the ANK-3 is how this flying wing UCAV might be expected to operate once in service. Notably, Turkey is also working on the more high-performance Bayraktar Kizaloma drone, described as the country's first unmanned fighter-like aircraft and which is already in flight testing. We estimate that these two types of aircraft can provide the Turkish Air Force with a unique blend of advanced unmanned aerial combat capabilities. It's also especially intriguing that, as far as what's officially disclosed, the United States does not have a flying wing UCAV program in active development. Meanwhile, China and Russia both do. For the United States, for the time being the focus appears to be on collaborative teaming aircraft, 
with an emphasis on generating affordable mass, as well as higher performing types closer in ethos to the Kiziloma than the ANK-3. This is despite the U.S. Navy's development of the X-47B carrier-borne UCAV demonstrator, later abandoned, as well as the USAF, making UCAV development a centerpiece of its future combat force in the late 2000s. The result is a startling gap in terms of flying wing UCAVs. Meanwhile, Turkey looks set to continue its drone revolution, with the ANK-3 now having joined the Kiziloma in flight test, as well as a range of successful, less ambitious drones, which have been combat-proven in different theaters. Turkey is also busy developing the new HURG Heat Advanced Jet Trainer, a supersonic design that can also provide light fighter capabilities. Then there is the aforementioned TFX fighter, probably the most ambitious of all these projects. At least some of these aircraft could also be very useful in filling an emerging gap in the Turkish Air Force's combat fleet. With Ankara facing delays in acquiring another batch of S-16 fighters from the United States. As an alternative, Turkey has also been looking at buying a batch of Eurofighter Typhoons, but such a deal has been opposed by Germany. Exactly how successful the ANK-3 or Turkey's other advanced combat aircraft projects may turn out to be as a matter of conjecture. Each one comes with a plethora of inbuilt risks, and there will very likely be some major hurdles ahead. In particular, software development, networking architecture, and subsystem integration can present big challenges. Just how reduced the ANK-3 signature will end up being is also a big question that could heavily impact how it's used in actual combat. Low probability of intercept radar, radios, and data links will also need to be developed to match whatever low observable physical capabilities it has now and succeeds in acquiring in the future. Its control architecture and whatever autonomy it may need are other critical issues. Regardless, the maiden flight of the ANK-3 is another very visible symbol of Turkey's uncrewed aircraft ambitions as well as the continuing advances made by its domestic aerospace industry.